from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with coverage of KubeCon and CloudNativeCon Europe 2021 virtual. Brought to you by Red Hat, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and ecosystem partners. Uh, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of KubeCon 21, CloudNativeCon, part of the CNCF's event. This is theCUBE's continuing coverage. We've got a great guest, CUBE alumni, entrepreneur, Vassam Tavara, founder and CEO of Upbound. Uh, great to see you remotely. Too bad we're not in person, but soon the pandemic is right around the corner. It'll be post-pandemic. We're seeing events are coming back. Great to see you. Thanks for coming on for KubeCon 21. Good, good to be back on theCUBE, John. Great to see you. You know, I've always uh, loved your career, what you've been doing. We've had many conversations on theCUBE and also in person. You're the creator of Rook and Crossplane, um, CNCF projects there. Um, great venture, really part of this cloud native revolution that's happening. You were early on in obviously you know, the history of your, your career, but now you're seeing it go mainstream. So let, let's get into that on this session because I really want to dig into this cross cloud and now GitOps is hugely popular. This is kind of the, what do you call it? Day two operations are ongoing. This is the future, this is the new environment. Um, but before we get going, talk about the update on your end. What's new with Crossplane? Uh, so Crossplane is growing. Uh, as you know, it's a multi-cloud control plane. It essentially lets you, uh, you can connect it up to all the different infrastructure vendors and lets you manage infrastructure in a consistent way consistent with what you know what we do with GitOps and and, and the Kubernetes API um, and so uh, the community has been growing tremendously we've uh, just applied for it to get an incubation status at uh, the CNCF uh, and uh, really happy with all the progress around it it's it's such an amazing journey that we've been on with crossplane you know it's funny you watch all the um the evolution of the cloud and you know, the early days, it was what is cloud, the big debate, people define what cloud was. Then it was, oh yeah, cloud's great. You can you know, start up cloud, developers, greenfield. Then it became enterprise cloud around 2015. Now, you know, today the cloud is not so much you know, moving to the cloud as it was in 2015. It's like scaling in cloud. That is true enterprise right. grade, um, real serious operational security impacts, multiple resources. And this is where cross cloud comes in or, or, you know, obviously hybrid clouds, the operating model everyone has agreed on that. That's the, the, the architecture. But that also brings in, assumes multiple clouds, right? This is where the new kind of control plane or you guys call cross cloud management kicks in. This is an enterprise priority from what I can see. Do you agree with that? Can you share um, your commentary on how much our enterprises are prioritizing cross cloud management? Because well, that yeah. seems to be the hot one. What's your take on this? Yeah, the way the way we see it is that, and we, we see this with customers, and we see this with folks in the community. Almost every enterprise we talk to is modernizing their IT. You know, as you said, they're not going to cloud; they're already in cloud, but they're doing so many more things to kind of accelerate the pace of innovation and reduce the time for them to ship applications, which is now uh, a fundamental part or a fundamental measure uh, of their success, right? And so, what we're seeing is that they're organizing into platform teams internally, and these teams are the ones that own the cloud accounts, they're the ones that are responsible for deploying infrastructure, cross, you know, whether it's cross cloud or hybrid cloud. Um, and these teams are essentially organizing to build what looks like an internal platform. And a key ingredient of this internal platform is a control plane. And this is what enables GitOps, you know, you see Kubernetes as a control plane that's in there. Um, it's, it's the piece that's allowing them to actually connect to different clouds. It's the piece that's allowing them to manage their infrastructure, whether it's on-premise or in cloud. It's the thing that's allowing them to do day two operations. All of that's happening in an interesting way. It's, it's happening within the enterprise. It is their own platform and it layers on top of the backend infrastructure that they're using, whether it's cloud providers or hybrid you know, infrastructure. It's happening in a way that's enterprise from the enterprise and going out to the vendors, which is a little different model than we've seen in the past. And that's where multi-cloud tends to come in and multi-vendor or heterogeneity in general uh, is, you, we see that very, very commonly in, in the enterprise. You know, I think you're exactly right. That's 
classic market evolution in, in computer industry. You know, multi multi vendors ultimately when things start to settle in on the massive growth. Hybrid cloud, however, is really kind of where the action is today, and you can see people struggling and innovating around the area of continuous operations and obviously continuous development, that's a DevOps concept, but the problem is, is that as they realize, well, stuff's in production, it's in the public cloud, it's on premises, you know, this, the operational piece starts to, to rear its head, and well, we got to fix that. This, and then they connect the dots of saying, if multi-cloud is coming, which people generally agree upon, then they go, if we don't clean this up, we're going to be screwed. That's generally the, the consensus that I can, that I hear from people. So explain, explain uh, with the rise of multi-cloud, what cross-plane is. I mean, what is cross-plane about? Give us an overview uh, around this. Yeah, so, so I, I mean, there's a lot of ways to describe this, but I, we see it as like the rise of platform engineering. There's a lot happening around people building their own platforms that layer on top of cloud which happens to also be multi-vendor and multi-cloud. And so when you're building a platform in an enterprise that can talk to Amazon, that can talk to Microsoft Azure, that can talk to your on-premise infrastructure, whether it's VMware or OpenShift, you need, a, you need a layer that is able to orchestrate and deploy and manage and deal with day two operations, right? That, that is an important piece. It's the piece that is, you know, where you can enforce your policies, you can set out your controls, whether your compliance do your compliance and governance, and essentially sell, sell, serve uh, uh, this to your developers so that they can actually get productive and deploy applications on, on this platform. And we see cross-plane and what, you know, what Kubernetes has started with, a control plane, as a critical approach in this, in this new platform. In fact, the approach that's kind of pioneered by Kubernetes with the Kubernetes API and control plane is now becoming the dominant way of managing infrastructure and deploying applications on it. This is, you hear this in different ways. Like this is why GitOps has be become popular. GitOps is a really great thing. It's a way to essentially let you manage infrastructure through you know, configuration that's stored in Git repositories. But the thing that it connects to is a control plane that's going to make it happen, right? And we see that with Kubernetes, uh, pri predominantly with Kubernetes, right? And so what Crossplane does is lets you extend the GitOps approach and the management approach that's pioneered by the Kubernetes community to the entire surface area of cloud. So not only can you deploy your containers using GitOps, you can actually manage through GitOps VMs, serverless, databases in cloud, hybrid environments, multi-cloud environments, you know, even you know, your, your uh, load balancers that are on premise could be managed through GitOps. Anything that speaks an API could be managed through GitOps if you go through a, a project like Crossplane. That's awesome. Not, that, part is, that part is where we're seeing the most success yeah. right now. We're seeing a lot of people that are adopting these approaches to managing infrastructure while they're building their platforms and they're pulling in Crossplane. We're seeing massive end user adoption of Crossplane right now. I want to get into this. I want to get into this impact of the control plane, but before we get there, I want to real quick, well, I got you, you're an expert. I know this, KubeCon, you don't need to explain what GitOps is, everyone knows what that is. Um, but for the folks that aren't, aren't, aren't in the community, I want to grab the sound bite if you don't mind. Could you define what is GitOps? <laughs> so, so GitOps is somewhat of a marketing term, uh, but, but I, the way I interpret it is essentially storing your configuration in a Git repository using, you know, uh, uh, versioning techniques that are pioneered to manage code, right? Whether, you know, using PR flows, storing things in Git, and doing the collaboration on what changes happen in Git, and then having that be essentially mirrored to a control plane that is able to implement the declarative configuration that you've specified. So a good example of this is if you wanted to deploy, say, you know, start up a an, a cluster, a Kubernetes cluster in a cloud vendor, and then run applications on it, and then configure it to connect to databases. You can describe your intent and store it in Git, collaborate with your team members on it, make sure it's all correct, and then through a GitOps pipeline, you're able to take those, you know, essentially that configuration, and then apply it via a control plane uh, onto your vendor of choice, right? That's that's the style. It's great because, you know, Git is a great place to store configuration. It's a great place to collaborate. There are 
amazing tools around PR flows, pull request flows. There are amazing tools for auditability and versioning. And you get to leverage all of those uh, when you are you know, deploying infrastructure that runs your entire enterprise. Yeah, and, and I would also add to that, I, I explain it simply for people that aren't in, in the weeds on the tech is, think of it like a QA for SREs. It's like you need to manage the infrastructure because we're, we're talking about DevOps, infrastructure as code, we're programming infrastructure. Right. So you got to have some sort of process. And I think this brings up my next point about this control plane because you mentioned um, cross plane has, these nice, has this nice, uh, 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 program to it. Most people write their own code. They'll like they'll they'll like do homegrown work to create in their platform, mainly because there's gaps in there. Can you comment on how you guys are different than you know someone saying, "Hey, I'm just going to write my own code and kind of do my own thing. I have my own platform team. I don't need crossplane. What do I what do I need you for? I'm going to do it myself." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what what we see predominantly is folks that are doing GitOps or infrastructure as code and setting up pipelines for their compute workloads and specifically for containers. Right, And then like you said, they're actually writing homegrown scripts or doing Terraform or doing other things that are on the side to deploy the other parts, uh, including you know, stateful workloads or things that are running across AI, ML, uh, on-premise hybrid, all of that stuff is done organically on the side of this beautiful path for GitOps, right? Um, what we're doing with Crossplane is essentially letting you bring all of the things that you're managing organically into the same pipelines with GitOps. So you're able to actually normalize on a single approach for management, for orchestration of infrastructure and applications. So you're, you're able to you know, get rid of your custom scripts and use APIs to define what your developer should do. You're able to you know, use the mechanisms that are and the tools that are available to you for GitOps and for the in the Kubernetes ecosystem to manage the entire surface area of you know infrastructure that you're managing within the enterprise in a consistent way, right? That's where Crossplane comes in. Crossplane enables you to extend the control plane of Kubernetes to manage everything that's offered by Amazon and Microsoft and Google and VMware and OpenShift yeah. and you know Red Hat. Everything else kind of becomes falls into the same orchestrate or the same control plane that's managing it all. And you can access it and give it to your developers in a safe way uh, using you know, GitOps-like uh, approaches. You know, I've heard horror stories where people push new codes, trivial stuff, and then all of a sudden it breaks because some code or script was written for a different purpose, but the impact it was creates an intim a small little dependency, but it, it's essentially the human error aspect of software. It's like, well, we didn't really kind of see that coming, but at that point that script worked. Now this new thing, something trivial and easy breaks because, and then it crashes. This is the kind of day two operations that we are talking much. about. Is that right? Very, that's, that's, very much, that, that's very much the case. And we see a lot of people kind of normalizing on templates and scripts you know, where it's like, okay, you want to deploy a database? Here's a, we'll open a ticket. Uh, and then some human runs, a, you know, a template, uh, a Terraform template, et cetera, that deploys a script and they shuttle credentials back to the developers over email or over Slack. And then they plug them into their manifest to deploy on through GitOps pipelines. It's, there's a lot of interesting yeah. things that are happening. Yeah. And what we, we want to do is like to, to prevent the human error, to put the guardrails in place, is essentially arrive at a consistent approach for all of it. Your legacy workloads, your multi-cloud workloads, your hybrid workloads, your the little system that's sitting on the side, you can you can do you can essentially normalize on using a single approach to manage all of it. One that is safe that you can give to developers directly. There it has all the guardrails in place, has policy and controls factored in and is exposed through an API. Yeah. That's the part that I think is, uh, you know, leads to the largest, most scalable platforms in the world. You know, I think that's just natural evolution too, as as your customers and, and enterprises get visibility on the operational standards. Like, okay, let's lock that in, put the guardrails down. Makes a lot of sense. I got to ask you um, on the enterprise adoption piece. It's something that we've been uh, covering on Silicon Angle and the Cube this year. Is looking at the um, mainstream adoption of Kubernetes and whatnot, and rest of the cloud natives. It's clear, certainly with COVID, it's it's accelerated everything. How is the enterprise adoption of cross-plane changing? Uh, is it gaining the kind of momentum you expected when you started the project a few years ago? 
Um, we're we're very pleasantly surprised by the adoption, especially in the last six months. Since we declared Crossplane 1.0, it has reached a maturity level now that it's actually in Fortune 100 massive production deployments in Fortune 100 companies. Um, this is why we're actually you know, taking it to the next level at CNCF. We're also proud of the ecosystem convergence on it. So we're seeing the cloud providers, we're working with all of them on you know, ensuring that Crossplane can address their infrastructure and we're seeing main, the community rally around us. Uh, we think the ecosystem part is super interesting for Crossplane. As you can imagine, having an orchestrator, a control plane that's able to you know, address a, the entire surface area of infrastructure offered by all these different vendors requires the vendors to be involved, right? Uh, and so both the, it's a two-sided network, both the ecosystem you know, adoption and the end user adoption are important for Crossplane. And we're seeing an, like massive traction on both right now. That's awesome. Um, traditionally, the, uh, as the adoption rises, the users want more things. Obviously, enterprise, sure. <laughs> they, they want everything. Every nook and cranny they want, every feature, uh, they want every integration. I mean, they prioritize, but as, but as you get more, it's not just like a consumer product, although it is cloud native and you got that. But there's, there's certain things that are table stakes and then there's innovation, but they really want the, the well-known integrations um, and support and so forth. How uh, is Crossplay and the community responding to the challenges as you guys get more popular and as the standards become clear around multi-cloud? Yeah, I mean, this is the beauty of open source. I mean, we're seeing a lot of different folks contributing to open source. The majority of contributors right now to Crossplane are outside of Upbound, the company that started Crossplane and uh, essentially donated to CNCF. We're seeing folks that are coming in and adding the resources that they're needing um, or adding features, really significant features to the, to the code base and improving which is, you know, again, it's the network effect around open source and it's just unbelievable to see and, and unbelievable to see it happen and happen so quickly around a project. That's awesome. Well, it's great to have you on. Uh, you're always great to talk to, you're super smart. We've had many great conversations in person, on camera, on the cube, now remote. Uh, CNCF is again, um, doing such a great job with the, um, the open source and now with KubeCon and CloudNativeCon, the open hybrid cloud and now cross-cloud, multi-cloud, whatever you want to call it, it's happening. So I got to ask you um, with respect to Kubernetes because you know we were all having beers in OpenStack that time when we were hey, Kubernetes is going to be hot. I think how many years ago that was. Um, I think you were kind of hanging around with me and Robert and others. Um, Kubernetes was just an idea and was developing. Now it's obviously mainstream. The question that I get a lot now is how do I manage and deploy Kubernetes in an open hybrid cloud to take advantage of, of the uh, current state of the art open software and commercial opportunities and be positioned to take advantage of multi-cloud. In other words, they want the future of multi-cloud, but they got to address the open hybrid cloud. So how do I do that? What's your, what's your advice? You know, honestly, uh, I'm reflecting on the success of Kubernetes. I, I, I have a, you know, maybe a, a controversial uh, answer to your question. <laughs> I think Kubernetes will be remembered for its control plane and its ability to manage infrastructure and applications in a general way, and not for the fact that it's a container orchestrator. In 10 years, we'll probably look at Kubernetes and say, its true superpower is the fact that it revolutionized how we manage infrastructure and applications using this declarative approach, using this control plane approach uh, to management. And the fact that it's managing, the fact that it started out with just containers is, will, will, will probably be a historical thing. Uh, so, so, so in some ways, you know, I, to, to, kind of, to kind of go back to your question, I'd say, uh, yes, I think Kubernetes is reached mainstream in the, in the container space, but we now have to uncontainerize it and use it for man management, managing infrastructure everywhere in a multi-cloud and a, in a, in a, you know, in a hybrid environment as well. Well, I mean, that's a great point. First of all, I don't think that's radical. I mean, I'm on the record years ago saying that I saw it as the TCP IP moment for cloud right. where you have interoperability and what you're getting at, I think that's so interesting right now. And I think everyone's kind of, it's the hidden secret. It's kind of like the land grab everyone's trying to go for is customers just want to provision and manage cloud infrastructure and program it with applications. Perfect. I mean, yeah. I mean, just think about that general basic concept. Right. I want to just provision. I don't want That's to right. have to have meetings, no waterfall, no this. I want to be agile. Yeah, I want operations, I want security, I want all that baked in. That's kind yeah. of where the puck is going. 
Very much. Self self service is a really critical part, and a part that um, is part of the Kubernetes uh, kind of design is you just, developers just want a database or they want a, a cache to run their application alongside their application. They don't really need to understand all the security details and networking and VPCs and everything else. And so if you give them an API, just like Kubernetes does, that tells them, okay, look, if you want a pod or if you want a database or if you want a cache, here's the API you use. Use whatever framework you want. Use any language you want. And then we've got all the guardrails built in behind the API line. Just, you know, through GitOps or not, deploy this thing, provision it, and then the control plane takes care of the rest. Yeah. That's, the, that's the path we're on as an industry. Yeah, whatever you want to call it, GitOps, cross-cloud, it's unlimited cloud resource at scale. This is what customers want to do. The market's evolving super fast. Tons of opportunities for entrepreneurs. Uh, tons of opportunities for enterprises who are themselves innovating. Again, another big theme here. I'll give you the final word around this user-generated open source paradigm, which they've always been involved, but now more than ever, you're starting to see that, I don't know, maybe second generation, maybe third generation, end user inside companies contributing to projects and driving this. This is an interesting dynamic. No one's really reporting this. Your, your thoughts on this end user driven yep. projects. We're, we're, seeing, we're seeing a lot of end users get involved in projects like Crossplane. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It's like companies that are, you know, directionally they're all, you know, when they're modernizing, they're all heading down a path that's open source or even towards cloud native projects, right? And so it's, what we see is they typically get involved initially by just asking questions and you know, reporting issues and asking for features. And then within, within a few months, you see con actual like meaningful contributions come in to projects, right? And so, I mean, there's nothing speaks, uh, nothing, nothing says they're, more co you know, they're committed more than just submitting a pull request where they've spent hours, weeks making changes to a project, right? And, and that's happening across the entire you know, ecosystem around cloud native. It's, it's what makes it so powerful. Awesome, so I'm great to have this conversation. Great insights, thanks for sharing the update on Crossplane and your vision around this you know, provisioning new infrastructure, having this control, universal control plan. I think this is where um, everyone is talking about having that value and that scale sets up automation. You know, it just brings everything to the next, next gen, next level. Uh, of capability, so I appreciate taking the time. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, John. Yeah, good, good to be back on the on the cube. Great to see you. Okay, this is the cube coverage of KubeCon 21 Virtual Cloud Native Con. I'm John Furrier, your host with the cube. Thanks for watching.